So in this sequence, 8, 12, 16, how many terms? Until they all add up to 308. So what do I know? What do I know? I know the first term is 8. I know the common difference is going up by 4. So it's 4. Um, I know the sum of all the terms is 308. And I want to find out what n is. You know, here, here's what you're given. Here's what you need to find out. Substitute it into the formula, and we're going to solve for n. But it's hard, because it's going to turn into a quadratic. So the formula, we're using this guy again. I'm not going to write it down, but we're using that. We're using that. And s, s sub n is, is 308. Is that right? Yep. So 308 equals, I don't know what n is yet. Don't know. Uh, times uh, 2 times the first term, 8, plus, I don't know what n is yet, n minus 1, times the common difference. What was the common difference? 4. Well, now that I substitute all that into the formula, I'm going to simplify what's inside the brackets first. Uh, 308 equals n over 2. Get rid of that time sign. 2 times 8 is 16. Plus, now just watch what I'm going to do here. I'm actually just going to take that 4 and multiply it through the brackets. So I get 4n minus 4. Are you okay with that? So I just expanded that 4 through. 4 times n is 4n. 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. Keep simplifying inside the brackets. 16 minus 4 is 12. 12 plus 4n. Now here, kind of running out of space, don't expand that n over 2 through. Don't multiply that through. You can, but you'll get, like, you just, we don't really need to do that. And what we can do is we can eliminate that fraction by multiplying both sides by 2. I'll say, well, I'll, I'll take this whole thing and multiply it by 2, and take that and multiply that too. And that's just a good rule just to eliminate that fraction right away. So 308 times 2 gives me 616. <laughs> Multiplying that by 2 eliminates that. And all I did uh, is just eliminated that uh, n over, or that over 2. So that's it's a bit cleaner. Now I expand. 616 equals n times 12n is, n times 12 is 12n. And n times 4n is 4n squared. Are we ready? Because now I am uh, right on the verge of solving for a quadratic. And solving for a quadratic, of course, we need to set it to 0. So that means I'd take that uh, 616 and Biff it over to the other side to make it negative. And when I do that, my quadratics, my n squared comes first, 4n squared, plus 12n, minus 616. So if we know anything about quadratics, I've got several ways of solving them. I can factorize them. I can use a quadratic formula. I could use a graphics calculator. I could make life easier and see if they have a common factor first, which I think this one does. It's got 4 as a common factor. And I can divide 4 out of everything and get n squared plus uh, 3n minus 154. And I can just divide both sides by 4 and just get, OK, now I'm getting somewhere, because at this point, we are simply solving for a quadratic. We could do it on the calculator. If it factorizes, then we can factorize it. And this guy, if, let's check this quadratic out here. Factorizing works like this, in case you forget. Are there any two numbers that add up to positive 3 and multiply to get to negative 154. 
That's the rule of factorizing. Okay. Uh, in this case, there are. Yes, there are. They happen to be uh, negative 11 and positive 14. Negative 11 and positive 14 will give me that. So this guy, oh, okay. Uh, negative 11 plus 14 gives me positive 3, and negative 11 times 14 gives me negative 154. That means this factorizes to n minus 11 times n plus 14. So n can equal 11, or n can equal negative 14, of course, because 11 minus 11 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. Negative 14 plus 14 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. But I can't have a negative 14 term, so n equals 11 must be my answer. Oh, okay. What do you think? <laughs>